there. Um, let me see if... Oh, well, somebody told me that High Tide isn't even playing. Edgy said that, and I was so busy trying to find him that I couldn't even... Uh, oh, I couldn't even read that. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Right, we are underway here. I'm excited, man. This is going to be a fantastic game, and things are going to be great. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, a couple things to note. A good early chance there, and oh, Motion comes in and almost scores. I was going to say, H2O is one of the... Um, also one of those more even MMR cap uh, teams across the board. They're hovering all right around 1200 MMR, so uh, they kind of use that MMR cap well. I'm looking to see a lot of even play out of them. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see which of them goes off uh, or if they kind of spread those stats around. That's one thing that I think has been really interesting, but a lot of early pressure coming in from AA here. Yeah, I mean, AA, I think back to being dominant, they have Will and Gatman back. These two have played together so much. They know each other so well, and they play... They, it's just it's an unstoppable force when they're both on the field. It is extremely tough to beat this team when you have both of them there. And especially with the pickup of uh, Motion in this last offseason, Motion is also a fantastic player. I legitimately have no idea how this team is under the MMR cap because I feel like all of them are basically like GCs. They just play so well. Yeah, they play very fast and very well together. I had the uh, pleasure of subbing in for AA uh, this last Sunday for one of their matches. So I got to play with Motion and Gatman firsthand uh, in, a, in a nice series. Uh, so I really can tell just how quickly they play the game. Um, it is in and out, a lot of fast rotations, extremely aggressive play. Uh, a lot of fun to play with, a little bit intimidating when you haven't played with them before and they kind of know where each other is heading. But uh, it was it was a lot of fun and we were able to see some success. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where it's another thing that's great about the RLPC uh, is that if you know you're on that minor team and you want to fill in for that major team and get to play with some people who are pretty well above your skill level, you've got a great opportunity to test your skills uh, in that kind of open format with people that you normally wouldn't get to play against. And an interesting pass coming in here, Motion's unable to make it go in, but that was a really good opportunity. Um, some progressive defense there by H2O. You know, we have seen kind of a quiet will, and I know that seems weird because, you know, like it's only 0-0 zero, zero and it's very early but I haven't seen him as aggressive and doing the going for the things that he normally goes to so maybe I don't I haven't noticed him really making any mistakes but maybe he's a little bit less confident in himself right now because it's been so long and that's Absolutely. definitely true as he asked you know he said don't he made the joke don't stream the game I'm gonna be terrible that definitely shows that you know a little bit of the lesson shaken confidence and I think that's probably gonna play a factor definitely a little bit of hesitancy and do you think some of that could be attributed potentially to motion and gapman really getting a good groove and will wanting to make sure that he doesn't mess up what they're doing because six and two it really isn't a bad record at all you know i know they didn't drop a game last season so the bar was set very high but they've really had some success with with what they've been doing and maybe he doesn't want to step on their toes a little bit that's definitely a potential of uh, there's definitely a potential of that um, I think it's kind of interesting because you have to, you know, like you said, remember that this is basically Will's first time with this team. And yes, he's played with Gat before, but adding Motion and uh, Motion is a very different. We see Chinchley Boyd coming out the goal. Forget what I was saying. A great shot coming out from him here. Will, unfortunately, just sent it over here expecting somebody to be there. And Chinchley Boyd just cuts that pass off and puts it home. And that might be exactly what we were just talking about. A really strong two-touch from Guglielmoid here. I really love the way that he cut that ankle and put that upper 90. Just one of those shots that, you know, a half-hearted attempt probably isn't going to go and it's going to get cleaned up, but uh, he had the patience and the ability to put it right on position. And, man, that was another close shot by AA. They're coming out firing. You know, they're down a goal now, so they're going to see what happens here. Guglielmoid coming in again. He seems like he's high-pointing the ball well. Uh, kind of errant touch to the middle, but it looks like Will's going to clean that up and stall for his team to get back. So we see Tormund going for kind of a weird touch there. He didn't rotate his car at all, and that definitely messed him up as it looked like he was a little bit unconfident going towards that car, or going towards that ball, which just seems a little bit weird. You know, I know Tormund, he's a, a good player, so missing that touch is kind of weird for him. And it, I, I don't know if that's indicative of anything going on tonight where he's just not playing super well, oh! or and that, what an opportunity. That was a nutty fake. <laughs> that <laughs> almost was worked out too. Fantastic. And it, it did, but unfortunately the ball just wasn't quite on target there. Mm, looking like a little bit of a double figure commit. out what to do here with no boost. 
Yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, when you when you don't have boost, you know that you don't, but your opponents don't. Uh, so a lot of the time, you can just pressure like you like you have the ability to do something. When in reality, your options are pretty one dimensional. Uh, but your opponent doesn't know that. You know, they don't know how much boost you have. So a lot of the time, you think I don't have boost, I need to get out. But a lot of the time, you actually need to maintain the pressure of your position. Otherwise, you kind of uh, give up the attack for your team. Exactly, and I think I just want to touch on something that we saw a little bit ago, but I didn't want to cut you off, and it was. A fantastic off the backboard stuff from Motion to put that ball back in front of net. And I just wanted to make sure that did not go unrecognized because that was an amazing play by him. Unfortunately, it just didn't result in anything. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of really good individual moments from AA here, but we're not seeing that team play come together and result in a goal. And ultimately, you can have a lot of great solo plays, but if they don't string together for a goal, uh, you're going to lose the game. Uh, and it looks like they're going to have three seconds here to make a last-ditch effort, see if they can keep it up. It looks like there's not going to be anybody there, and H2O is not going to play around. They're just going to spike this right into the ground, and that's going to end our first game, has man. Well, so it's interesting that you talk about a lack of team play, and I don't, I mean, I don't want to... Uh you know, uh, insult them because they were obviously a fantastic team last season, but Gatman and Will have never really had what I would call fantastic team chemistry. They play really well together because they're such great individual players, and I don't think, and I think because they're, they're such great individual players, it kind of carries them to these wins where they don't need to look for each other as much. And coming into this season, the playing field is a lot more level. Things are a lot tougher for those teams that did so well last season that they're definitely going to need to look at things and say, okay, how can we pe play off of each other more? And I think Motion is a good addition to that because he, he passes a lot and he does really well uh, getting that ball into the center for his teammates. And a great fake coming out from him there to allow this possible goal. Oh. Barely saved. Oh, oh my that goodness. That is so heartbreaking. That is so heartbreaking. It's one of those things where you don't want to come in too hard because if they get that clear right over you, you are toast. But Motion is an excellent enabling player. I, I really felt like he was a really good setup man for Gatman. Uh, I felt a lot of chemistry when they were playing on it. Um, not romantic chemistry, but I'll just say, I will well, say there, there may have been something there. Uh, and uh, you, you never really know how adding that third is going to come into play because especially if Will wants to be more aggressive, um, you know, is who's going to play out the back? I know that Will usually does, and he comes in for those crazy saves, but... Uh, it's going to be interesting to see over the next four minutes what they can put together because that's all they've got. It's, it's four minutes here. That's an interesting point about Will as a player is Will and Gatman both have the offensive mindset of um, I want to be the one to score because I'm really freaking good at it and I'm going to carry my team to victory. However, Will also is able to really change that to a more defensive focus, which we may see him pick up more in this uh, season as Motion and Gatman play so well together. But almost every time he's in a game where he realizes he needs to be more defensive-minded, it happens very late in the game for him to make that decision. And it, it costs tough. them a few goals first. Yeah, you know, you've got to ask yourself the question, how much do I want to be reactionary to my opponent? How much do I want to play my game first? Uh, and we are seeing Aerial Aces come out with a great pinch as they kind of move the ball downfield. This should be cleared pretty easily, though. It's centered back up, a little bit of a double commit. Motion is going to have to really stall here for somebody to get back. There's nobody in goal, but they're going to have plenty of time to clean it up, and Will does. But this is going to come back across goal. Could be a potential shot on, depending on who gets there, but Gatman is able to stuff it off to the side. But a great, a great read coming in to keep that attack off the boards for Aerial Aces. Gatman Motion comes trying in. Trying to do something pretty nutty, but unfortunately that pulled him out of the play, and that was a really good opportunity. So we saw him try to make something happen there, but unfortunately Motion was already coming. So I think we're seeing a little bit of, uh, you know, like I was talking about, Gatman trying to do too much himself, and like Will maybe trying to do the same thing, which is pretty frequent with this AA team. And I have to be honest, that's what LGBT used to beat them in the playoffs last season, and that's what we always talked about. So I think if you're looking at AA and saying, okay, this is a pretty good team, how do we beat them? That's something you need to look for. And that's something, if you're AA, that you definitely need to fix to get that communication up. Yeah, so tell me a little bit more about that, what you guys did that you felt like really was a potential weakness for, as we see a demo come out, uh, but it's not going to result in anything, that you, that you felt like was kind of a crack in the armor there. So, for uh, in that series, something we talked we talked about a lot with AA, we scrimmed them a lot last season because, you know, we kind of knew that this was our biggest competition. Um, right. And... There's a lot of things that you have to do, just recognizing a team and seeing what, they, what they're not great at. With AA, what we recognize, and I feel comfortable saying it now because we already won that season, and you know, before I held it close to the chest because I didn't want to give them any ideas on how to fix it. But challenging this aggressive team at half and not giving them any room to breathe will suffocate them to the point where they start making the double commits, 
they start getting like angry at each other because they can't break out of their own zone. And it really helps you to just... I don't want to say suffocate them, because putting that much pressure up on a team is already very hard when you have such a good team like AA. But if you can get that pressure challenge early and not let them break out of their zone, as we see them liking these long clears, it's really going to force them into a position that they don't like to be in, and then it's going to force them to make more double commits without that allow you to capitalize on them. Yeah, that reactionary style can definitely have some benefits, especially if somebody's used to being aggressive and going up and staying up. Uh, if you can keep them at that stat line where it's 0-0 or a close game and you can kind of come back into it, once you go down a couple goals, uh, it becomes more difficult at higher levels to kind of come back. Those opportunities will come over time, though, especially as players get frustrated. And uh, we're going to see one minute left here, and do you think we're going to see an overtime here? I would be... Very surprised if we did. I think H2O has them in a good position, and I think we're, they're just waiting for that moment. They've had a good opportunity there, just nobody could get that doink out. Nobody was there to take the shot. And I think at this point, AA is just looking to really keep this pressure up for this last minute of the game and make something happen. Um, so that's the thing about AA, though, is that any individual can come out with a really strong play. And like we talked about before, it's that single individual play that comes out that forces that clutch save, but it doesn't always result in a great clear, can really provide that second opportunity uh, for your teammates to come in if they can have the presence of mind not to double commit uh, and to really press on the right time and the right opportunity and keep that space. I think we might go to the end of the overtime here, or maybe AA making something happen. As Corman and Gingley, both are Gingley, both actually came back as a tor or Freeze went up for that ball. And that was definitely a breakdown there. They could have done a lot better job of um, staying a little bit more aggressive, having one man up ready to receive that ball. And like that is, in fact, going to take us to the overtime. But I wouldn't be surprised if it was a short one. I, I definitely think somebody's going to strike quick here. And we might see it already with there it is slamming that one home. Sometimes all you need is that kickoff reset and transition to just kind of break up the boost grabs, uh, break up some of the rhythm and play, and Torman really wasn't able to be there. I, I think he maybe thought that somebody was going to come across and hit it, and by the time that it had gotten past the point of no return, he was unable to pursue it. So we are tied up one apiece, and you called it, Hazmat. A short, short, short overtime. Well done. And we saw what's really interesting, I think, is H2O only coming out with three saves there. And yes, they lost, but if you take a look at the, sc uh, the shot line, we saw five saves for Aerial Aces, so they definitely got to get them a little bit more reeled in. I think Aerial Aces is also used to taking a lot more shots, so they definitely got to get a little bit more in their own mentality, taking, those mo taking more shots in the shots that they do get, making them a little bit more accurate and putting them on target, as we saw that uh, about 20 or 40% of them weren't actually on target. Well, we've only got two, goal, two goals scored for our first two games, which for both of these teams is extremely uncommon, but I think it shows a little bit. Uh, it shows a few things. It shows some respect that they have for one another. Uh, it shows the high level of play that they're doing. And sometimes those lower scoring games, you can say, maybe aren't as exciting. But if you know what to look for, uh, if you look at what's happening with some of the positioning and you look at the ways that these guys are touching the ball, they're not missing open shots. Those shots are being denied. Those plays are getting broken up before their obvious scoring opportunities. Uh, so it's one of those things that you can really learn a lot if you pay attention to the way that people are approaching the ball, the way that they loop, the way that they rotate around, and the way that they create pressure and break up dangerous plays here. Uh, it really is an extremely exciting match. Now, this is a dangerous scoring opportunity that unfortunately crossbars, and it looks like Will is going to be able to clear that out safely. But we're right off the bat, a really good opportunity for H2O. Yeah, they're getting it kicked off strong. I think they're a little bit upset that they lost that game, and they want to prove that we're staying undefeated and we're beating AA even with Will. So I think they're coming out strong. They want to give it their all on this one and really just make sure that they come off with this win. But that might a not happen. Very as cheeky a cheeky pass by Will. A great opportunity as Get Will just plays, uh, places that one right down to Gatman. He knew exactly where he was and just got a right to him. Oh, absolutely. A two-toucher. Uh, you know, sometimes when you're challenging in the corner, you know that you have somebody backing you up, so all you have to do is force that opponent uh, into one direction, and then you know that that second defender is going to clean it up coming out of net. But Will, able to have the, the patience the patience and the peace of mind uh, to really be able to slow that down and to get the right double touch at the right moment to beat two defenders, and Gatman a great job being there for that goal. The trust you have to have there in order to stick around in that situation where you're faced off against two defenders trying to get that pass through is you, you really have to believe your teammate is capable of doing that. That's exactly what Gatman did. And I, a great save coming out from Gatman that just ruined my train of thought of a really great opportunity for Torment too. I, I forget what I was saying. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Gatman did an awesome job holding that flip. A lot of the time when you see what's going to happen, you kind of spam that button a little too early, but Gatman being extremely patient, waiting for the moment that he needed to get that last little rotation on his car in order to get that cleared out of there. A really great play by Gatman and a really good opportunity for H2O, broken up by great defense. He's not giving anything away for free. Now, unfortunately, this is going to come across to see how Gatman clears a good pinch. Uh, it's going to go into the opposite corner of the H2O. He's going to soft settle it. Motion's going to come over the top. Not a good backboard attempt. It looks like they're just going to let this ball possession go and challenge late. I think Motion definitely could have gotten a better touch there, put it a little bit, little bit lower, more direct on the backboard, and I think he didn't get the touch he was looking for. But Motion finally does get the touch he needed and comes out of nowhere. I want to see this replay because I wasn't even sure where he came from. He was already up in the air as Will's touching that. He knew exactly where that ball was going to be, and he knew what he needed to do. A fantastic goal from him, and what a pass from Will. Yeah, a great pass and a beautiful soft touch with the bottom of the uh, bottom of the car there. One of the softest places you can hit the car to just drop it right in. Really hard to get the angle right on uh, really directing that exactly where you want in the goal, but he's even able to take that over another defender. And it looks like we're seeing some of Aerial Ace's form return as we get into this third game, has Matt? I think we're seeing them. I think we sh we're seeing Will finally figure out how to play with motion. And I think it's working well because, you know, that's just what you need. You need a little bit of time. You need things to work itself out. you got to just sit back and figure it out. And that may have been what he's doing. That may have been why he was so quiet in that first and second game is because he was sitting and waiting. And it's definitely paid off as you see them already up too well halfway through this game. Well, we've got just as many goals in the first three minutes, or first two minutes and 30 seconds of this game as we did all of our first two games. So what do you think you're going to see from H2O here coming forward? I mean, they've got two minutes and 20 seconds. This is for all the marbles. They need to get two goals. How do you think they do it? Oh, not three goals like that. now. <laughs> well, I honestly think, I mean, I don't want to glaze over that goal because it was fantastic. A great read from Gat to see that coming out and just putting that right in that close, uh, close corner. Not able to let the defender, or able to not let, how do I phrase this? He forced it so that the defender could do nothing about that, is what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. Well, and those close post shots are extremely terrifying, because if you're just off by a little bit, it goes ricocheting off to the side. Uh, and a lot of the times, if you miss that shot close post, it, it's going to clear for your opponent. Like, not only did you miss the shot, but you actually put your team on its heels in a bad position. And AA on the attack once again, an unfortunate crossbar, but Will's going to come in and score it. The round is on, Hazmat. I think we are seeing AA lose their or AA, H2O lose their first game here. And I would not be surprised because AA is, like we talked about, is a fantastic team. And this is a great performance by them in this third game. And we talked about, you asked me what I thought my opinions were going to be when they were still up 2-0 on the rest of this, how the rest of this game goes. And I have to be honest, I don't think H2O is going to be able to do much about it. Because we've seen H2O at what I would call... And another goal right there, making it 5 zero. We saw H2O pretty much at their best in knowing where each other are going to be and doing really well this whole game. But now we're finally seeing AA figure each other out and be able to perform here. Do you think that's the difference between the first two games and this game? Because obviously there's something different. We've got five goals scored by Aerial Aces, uh, and so something has changed. Uh, what do you think has changed about the way that H2O and AA are playing that, uh, that has made it to where this game has opened up as much as it has? I don't think H2O has done anything too crazy different yet. We saw Tormund with a great save there. They're still, they're not double committing. They're playing, they're trying to play their game and do things well. But I think we just saw AA all of a sudden get a lot more comfortable very quickly. Yeah, you, you really, if you've been watching all three matches, you really saw uh, the chemistry between their three starters really come back together. Uh, and it looks like a great save coming in from Giggly. They are going to need to do more than that to get back in it. Five goals seems insurmountable here. Uh, but you've really seen them come together, exactly. And I think H2O isn't challenging as much in some of the places that they need to. Uh, I think once you get beat a couple ways, you start to respect certain things that people can do, and it opens up a lot of fakes. And so a lot of the time, the more goals you have scored, it, it generally leads to more goals uh, because you start to realize, oh, I can get beat like that. Uh, or, oh, that pass could happen like that. And you just saw some really aggressive play payoffs there for AA. Exactly, yeah. they. I think they've figured out their opponents. they figured themselves out, and it is proving to work. It is with 30 seconds left there, it's still at 5-0. 
I think one of the ways that uh, I have seen H2O uh, play a little differently than those first two games, a great, a great stop by Freeze there coming in at the end uh, to be able to hold that flip and, and come on back uh, and get that ball to keep it out of danger. That was that was an impressive heads up play for him uh, that really helped his team out there. Uh, but you saw H2O stop challenging the passes as a pressing. Um, if you look, three of the last five goals have been off of really strong assist plays. And it looks like H2O is going to get on the board right at the end. Just finally getting that one goal. That's exactly what I was thinking is it's still not going to be a high scoring game for H2O, but it really surprised me with the first score line. And H2O still did what they needed to do well, and you saw them hold that same score line that they held uh, that it was the first two games of that that they got one goal whereas the first two games were both one goal games that's what i was trying to say if that made any sense um